So Handel had gone through an artist's journey whereby you have to deal with the changing tastes of the public. You can't keep serving them the same thing you gave them 20 years ago. You have to evolve. So, but yet he didn't do it grumbling or being fed up. He did it with resilience and creativity. Resilience in the sense that he did not give up music just because it wasn't working for a period in time. And creativity because he kept composing new music. So his creative mind kept going. And that's a very important lesson for each of us. Just because things are changing doesn't mean you need to give up. It means you need to re-strategize. You need to see what's going on and you need to see how can I change what can I do to better serve the environment that I'm in? And instead of me saying, you know, this music thing isn't working, let me go find a job downtown. That's not, the ne that's not the best way to do it. And that would be lacking resilience. Always endure. Always be willing. To, always be willing to be resilient. You will come out stronger than if you just give up. So his resilience and creativity ended up bringing about two very famous pieces to this day, Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. The Queen of Sheba being one of the pieces that was played in the opening for the London Olympics. Now, at this point in time, England has just come to the end of the War of Austrian Succession. You can go find out what that is. But King George wanted to celebrate the end of this war. And what does he decide to do? He calls up on his old pal, George Friedrich Handel, his namesake, who composed music for his coronation. And he commissions him to compose music for this evening. And this evening is going to have fireworks. Now, as royal and as brilliant and as beautiful as celebrating the end of a war can be, it was a whole different story on the streets because music at that time was not for the regular peasant, for the regular commoner like you and me. It was for the aristocrats, the high in society. So when the regular folk heard that, hey, the person who composed music for the king's coronation is going to be composing for this event and it's going to be an outdoor event, meaning each and every one of us can listen to it, do you think they're just going to stay home shoveling hay? Absolutely not. All of the regular people decided to go down for this particular event so that they could hear this music because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for each of them. So just imagine the streets full and packed, horses, buggies, people who haven't showered, horses that are pooping everywhere, and it's going for miles long. There was so much commotion leading up to this event that strange things were happening. There was a point in time where one soldier's hands got blown off by one of the cannons during rehearsal because there were 101 cannons used to commemorate that event. When it came time for the event, it actually started raining midway in the show. A woman's clothes got on fire from a stray rocket. Fireworks burnt two soldiers and blinded a third. So much mayhem was going on, but nevertheless, the event was a success. It might have been different on the ground, but the music was one that ended up living on for years and years and years. The music for the Royal Fireworks. Handel would go on to compose for another 10 years, but in August 1750, something very significant happened in his life. In 1750, in a journey back from Germany to London, he had a serious carriage accident in the Netherlands and his eyesight began to fail. He had a cataract, which is something that makes your makes your vision very opaque it's hard to see through go find out what that is a cataract and he was operated on by a very famous charlatan a charlatan is an imposter someone who claims to be somebody fakes their credentials but really has no skill and no ability to be where they are so imagine a doctor who says i am a doctor i can operate in you i've operated in all these people but really he has no clue he's never been to medicine school he has no idea where to start but you can't help but believe him because that time there's no Google, there's no way to find out. You just hear things word, word of mouth. So he was operated on by the charlatan Chevalier Taylor and this operation did not improve his eyesight at all. In fact, it possibly made it worse. And so by 1752, he was completely blind and he died in 1759 at the age of 74 years. Remember this imposter, this charlatan Chevalier Taylor because we will come back to him. He was buried in Westminster Abbey and over 3,000 mourners came to his funeral. The whole of England loved him so much and he was so dear to them. As much as he was German, he was British as well. So you'll see that when you Google his name, they'll say a German British composer. So let us listen to our last piece for George Friedrich Handel, music for the Royal Fireworks. 